But if you look at some of the recent polls, one particular poll by an organisation which I'm a member of, My Death, My Decision, there's something like, I think it was 5,000 people uh, canvassed and it was something like 86, 87% of people believed that assisted dying should be available in this country, including uh, people with dementia or any other, sorry, Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia, provided that it's very important that they've still got capacity. But, but most people talk about the, the assisted dying and, and it being forbidden under the Suicide Act. Now, I think the Suicide Act needs to stay in place. It clearly needs to stay in place and there should be severe penalties for anybody that is unlawfully committing a suicide because that is the way to protect vulnerable people. What I believe we should have is freestanding legislation that gives people over the age of 18 who have got capacity and a terminal illness or a degenerative condition that cannot be cured or treated the right to an assisted death just as it's been practiced for over 70 years in Switzerland. I hear a lot of I hear from a lot of people who say they oppose assisted dying and when you strip back their argument it's not opposing assisted dying it's concerns for the vulnerable yeah. and, and that is very very important so there must be very strict guidelines in there and people talk about the old relatives being cajoled into it well that wouldn't take place because you've got to state you've got clear documented evidence that you would prefer an assisted death under certain circumstances you'd have to write why you want that assisted death and where I, the strongest safeguard I think is the assisted dying so but when I go to Switzerland uh, I'll have an intravenous drip set up in my arm and I have got to turn the dial on that drip to administer the, the, the drugs that will kill me now to kill yourself with a rational mind has got to be the most counterintuitive thing for a human being to do. I always say that if I was being swept along, but well, we're here in, in Plymouth, if the tide took me out and I could grab a piece of sand, I know it wouldn't stop me, but I'd grab it because we, we, we were wired that way yeah. to survive. So I think that assisted dying is the way forward with the most um, strongest safeguards in, in place. I've been a campaigner since being 14, 15. I'm, always been politically driven not just a, a trade unionist but for workplace things I've, I've been involved well very very early age was protesting against the Vietnam War I was campaigning against apartheid in South Africa I've been a member of CND uh, joined people uh, Green and Common uh, I've campaigned against Clause 28 when it was being brought into the schools on and on and on so if I've ever seen an injustice I've always wanted to do something about it and in all honesty, this is not about life and death. It is about inequality because going back to the Emperor King George V, his wife chose to have him euthanised by the physician and even time, so it would be in the correct newspaper the next day. I think it would be in the Times rather than the lump something or the other. If you're fortunate enough, like I am, to be able to afford, well, it's £7,250 I have to pay to Life Circle. That's for the medical, the medical procedure, it's for my um, cremation and ashes being sent back, and the psych assessments for two or three days I'm there. But, you know, flying from Manchester, you're talking about £250 a person return. Uh, flies, the hotel rooms, you're lucky if you can get one for £200. So it gets, you know, you start moving towards eight, even £10,000 just for two people. But if you've got that money, you can go. However, for the majority of people in this country who are now seen as the most socially and economically deprived, that is an amount of money that they will never have. And I, I do a leaflet and I, I call, I say to people, please join me in my last campaign. So I'm a lot happier campaigning and making life as you know it's a horrible word n normal whatever that is it's i can still get on i can still use skills that i've had all my life and hopefully i'll leave the seeds of something behind that will be developed a uh, future day so people don't have to leave the home don't have to select which relatives they can afford to take and people like they have done in switzerland for 70 plus years die peacefully in the, the armchair at home it's about quality of life and I think the quality of life is extremely subjective. And for me, now my quality of life has been eroded quite a lot. I can, I can no longer read properly. 
I, I have struggled, well, I do not write because I just, what I put on paper, or what I think is going on paper and what is on there is two totally different things. I used to love walking, I used to love cycling, I can't do any of them things now, but the quality of life at this stage it is acceptable to me. But, you know, when I can't put a meal together with great effort, when I can't be totally independent, and, you know, that situation, I, I just cannot visualise myself in a bed, not being able to do anything. However, there are people that don't have a problem with that, and, and that's fine, and that is fine, and that, that's what we're about, we're about choice. 99.9% .9 of the objections that are raised are safeguarding, and what I'd like to do is sit down with those people, because they oppose assisted dying, the big group of us that are supporting it. And the one thing we have got in common is the protection of the vulnerable. Mm. So rather than, you know, when, when I meet people, I say, let's sit down, let's have a chat, and let's work out a way of going forward that is acceptable to you and ensures that people are not ab ab abused in this situation. And anybody that does want assisted death, it's choice, it's free will. There's certainly a will amongst the electorate because survey after survey, like I said, the one that was done by My Death, My Decision, shows overwhelming support for it. it, it no doubt in my mind. The last few months I've spoken at public meetings, I've spoken in hospitals to, to L1s and L2s, I've spoken at doctor's surgeries to, to all the staff, uh, I've, I've spoken at pensioners meetings, trade unions, political groups. And we're talking there, something like three or four hundred people have had three, four objections to it, all based on faith. So I would say, yes, there is that will, there is that want for people to control their own destiny in that sense. The politicians, they're the ones that we've got to convince. They've got to listen to us. Uh, we're not going to get anything done over these next couple of months until this whole disaster around Brexit and who's running Parliament and all this is, is out of the way. I do genuinely believe, though, that it will be introduced in, Sw in Scotland, but prior to it being introduced um, in England, there's, there's an organisation called My Friend, uh, Friends at the End, FATE, they're known as. Uh, they campaign in Scotland and they're doing remarkably well and winning support. The, the Parliament's not as big, it's not as bureaucratic. Uh, I think it's actually more democratic than, than what ours appears to be. So yeah, I think it'll come in Scotland, maybe within the next 10 years. And I think once that comes in, then it will just England and Wales will have to follow suit. Unfortunately, I'll be long gone by then. <laughs>